everybody so welcome back to another video this is your boy Robbie I uh, hope you guys enjoy this one we're gonna be doing a review on the new in dash system that I got for my car so we're gonna cover all the points on it and what I don't like about it what I do like about it and we'll go from there so I hope you guys enjoy that video alright guys so now we're in the car and uh, this is the radio installed um, the fitment on it is pretty good on the sides, on the bottom sucks because it doesn't, this gap here always stays there. If you push it in, the clips click, but then they click back out. If you replace them with the stock ones from the stock radio, they're supposed to work better, but that didn't work for me either. So that kind of sucks. So I'm bummed out about this shaking a little bit here and it's vibrating sometimes when I'm playing music and stuff, you can hear it. Um, when you go through bumps on the on the road and stuff and that annoys me so I'm gonna have to figure something out here so this thing stops uh, rattling around here so that's the unit you get a DVD player you get two slots for SD cards pretty much one of them says GPS but it's basically another SD slot you do have a built-in microphone um, these are the buttons as you, as you can see um, I do have also an external a microphone that's uh, <clears throat> that came with the unit that's all the way up on the left side on my car uh, over here by the window so that's that this is how it looks I haven't booted it up yet because I wanted you guys to see the speed of the boot up and all that kind of stuff I do have a subwoofer um, the unit came with a rear view camera um, for free and then I, I bought a front view camera which is a dash cam and this thing can can support all of that plus also I think it has a, two or one more input for video so let's say you wanted to plug in a PlayStation or something like that, you could do that as well. So that's that. I'm going to turn it back, turn it on right now so you guys can see. Um, you do still get your uh, old LCD on top and all the information still stays there. Although the, the time, you cannot edit it. Um, I read online people are, be able, are able to edit it by uh, holding down the mode button on your steering wheel. Well, in my case, it doesn't work. So I've held down every single button possible. It just doesn't work. I cannot reset this uh, this clock here, and the only way to do it is um, going out at 12 o'clock a.m. <clears throat> at night and plugging in my battery exactly at that time. So both of these will reset at 12. So that's that. All right, so let's boot it up and see what happens. Yeah, sorry about the blurriness. My camera tends to focus itself inside the. So this is a boot up screen. I I've changed it to the from the stock one. Stock one usually says Eon on, or usually says Eon on. Um, I changed it to Mazda Speed one. You cannot change this unless you get the password from Eon on for the settings of the of the unit here. So as you can see, it takes a long time to boot up. This is gonna about take about 30 seconds or so. And of course it's going to boot up the last app that was opened. So it's still opening the apps and stuff like that, whatever you had opened. Finally it booted up. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, it already connected to my Bluetooth. So I'm going to go ahead and hook it to Wi-Fi and then uh, cut you guys back in. Alright guys, so here we have it. I just hooked it up to Bluetooth and also... It's hooked up to Wi-Fi right now. I'm streaming Wi-Fi connection from my phone because I do have a hotspot. So let's go over the exterior of the unit real quick. Um, one thing that I've, I need to mention and point out is there's an IR reader here and supposedly that's supposed to come with a remote. Well, I didn't get a remote in the package at all. So I'm not sure if this is um, because it was a special unit for... Uh, for Christmas deal or something like that and they were trying to be cheap on it or what but I'm not exactly sure why I didn't get a remote um, another thing is uh, most people here that got this model 6151 F for this specific car I've seen a lot of videos online and things like that they do have the model number written here 6151 F in mine I don't have it so I don't know what's going on this is supposed to be the, the newest unit they have for the car and uh, it's supposed to be you know the fastest one that they have right now it's running uh, lollipop I think five not lollipop I'm not sure it's the, it's the Android version 5.1.1 so it's supposed to be quicker than the previous versions but I don't see it being quicker you guys saw the boot up time it just took so long to do so this is what the stock unit looks like from the beginning I have installed already previously a couple of apps on here uh, that I use um, 
my Spotify. I also have uh, Netflix, Hulu. I have Cody even. So that's that pretty much here. Internet Explorer or Chrome. Um, they're both okay. Chrome is better. A little bit faster, I would say. Um, I don't like the stock UI because it just... I mean, it's pretty cool looking, but it's not... I don't like scrolling too much. I just want to have all the icons pretty much on the front screen because I don't have to scroll too much. So that's that. Right now, it's everything is pretty good looking. Um, it's pretty fast at the moment because I let it boot up. I let it connect to, to my Wi-Fi, my phone, and all that. But prior to that, it was just very, very, very slow to get to that point. Once everything is... Another thing is I'm not sure how to do it. Um, I don't know how to stop the updates. Um, every time that there is an update for any of my apps that I've downloaded, they automatically start updating as soon as they connect it to Wi-Fi. And I want to be able to turn that off. Um, maybe it's just something... I'm not an Android guy, so I'm not too familiar of how to disable that. But as you can see right now, I have nothing in the background running except my Spotify and my amp. Um, so yeah, let's go over some of the uh, features that are on there and the stock apps that came with the unit. So first things first, you get your Bluetooth here. Um, if you get the little Bluetooth icon here, that means it's connected to your to your phone. I'm connected to my iPhone at the moment, and yeah, there's my all my numbers and everything. <clears throat> so that all works perfectly fine. The dialing pad is pretty nice and big. Uh, you know, it, it works pretty good. Um, Although, people on the other end do have a little bit of a, a delay when I speak. They hear me a little bit later. So, navigation. Um, originally, I think their stock one was the DAB Plus, DAB Plus or whatever. And it's horrible. Um, it takes forever to boot up. So, if you have uh, third-party apps that are installed, it will prompt you and see, do you want to use, and just like Android, do you want to use Maps or Google Maps or whatever you want to do. At the moment, I think I have Maps. So let's select Google Maps and see how fast it will boot up. <clears throat> it boots up pretty quick. Um, right now, my connection on my phone is not the best um, because I have like one bar of service. So it's not ideal, but it works pretty good. Uh, you can search anything here. You can also press um, the Siri thing over here and you can speak on the microphone. And then they'll search for something for you around. So that's on the navigation. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's cancel out that so it doesn't slow down our system too much. So yeah, cancel that even too. And yeah. So that's navigation. Radio works perfectly fine. It's nice and big. You know, everything sounds amazing. Um, you have 15 presets, AM, FM, all that kind of stuff. Um, it does not say the song name, though, when it's playing. Um, I'm not sure why. I thought it's supposed to do that, but it didn't do that. Um, maybe it's some setting or something, but I don't think so. A video is your DVD, which I haven't used yet. You have MP3, DVD, all that kind of stuff in here. Um, A2DP, it's basically... A2DP, it's basically like a, your auxiliary cord, but through Bluetooth. So it's your phone on Bluetooth. So basically, if you're playing a video or something on your phone on on YouTube, and uh, it's kind of like you're throwing it, you're throwing the sound onto this, so you'll be able to play it through your through car speakers type of deal. So with this app, because it's the original app that came from Yanon you will be able to use your steering wheel controls up and down all that kind of stuff volume um, that'll all work with this one so if you have like let's say Spotify running on your phone and you try to change a song through the steering wheel controls it'll work but if you have Spotify uh, working within the unit here like on the app here then the steering wheel controls don't work so the steering wheel controls do not work on third-party apps which is kind of a bummer and I'm not happy about that at all I'm not sure why they don't work you're supposed to be able to oh one more thing another um, so if you're using this app here um, and it's playing music or something you're trying to go to the next song usually it's the it's the up arrow on your steering wheel controls right well when you go up arrow on the steering wheel controls it resets the song to the beginning it goes backwards instead of going to the next song it goes to the previous song so that's not good. I mean, I have to just kind of remember just press down to go next instead of press up to go next song or whatever. Um, on Spotify, that does not even work at all. The only thing that works in the steering wheel controls within 30, 
third party apps is the volume that's all um so that's that um also these buttons here don't work within third party apps at all you press it just nothing happens at all so that's that app uh, amplifier here it gives you just uh, presets of you know how you want your amplifier to sound or whatever fader here is where you want your speakers to be going front back side to side whatever um apk install it's i don't even know what the hell this thing's supposed to do it's supposed to have some <coughs> some stuff like basically this is how you get see there's usb one two and three and four um i guess one and two will be your I don't even know. No, SD cards are here. So these are your two SD cards. See, it says GPS card, SD card, and these two. So if you have any files from here, I guess this is where you install. This is like the installer for putting some kind of software onto this thing or whatever. Um, AV, AVIN, or whatever you want to call it. That's um, if you have, let's say, an external, some kind of a device plugged into the back, kind of like a PlayStation or something like that. This is where it will show. Um, so that's that Internet Explorer. You guys know what that is? Calculator, calendar, clock. These are all the things that are in here. <clears throat> this one with no name. Control settings and music. Oh, that's a folder. Okay. So <coughs> I don't know what control settings are. These thing, this thing doesn't make any sense to me at all. Left, right. I have no idea what this is supposed to do. So, Ianon, if you're watching this, let me know in the comments what the hell's going on with that one. Um, there's a music app here. That's the built-in um, music app for for the unit. So, if you have any any songs stored on your SD card, they will show here and stuff. So, and I'm pretty sure the steering wheel, the steering wheel controls and the on unit um, controls will work with that. DAB Plus, we already know that. That's um, their uh, that's their navigation system. Downloads is a downloads folder. DVD. That's where your DVD is here. Well, I don't know what video is. Video is that. Let's see. I'm not sure what video is supposed to do. I mean, I thought that video was the DVD, which it is. But we have a DVD or DVR. DVR is the front camera, by the way. So DVR is front camera. You can click record. And then I've already actually recorded something. So here we go. These are my footages. So let's say you select one. You press play and it shows you. This was the other day when I was in the rain or whatever. So it records pretty good. It shows you like some kind of speed, altitude, latitude, time, when it was filmed, all that kind of stuff. And then you can delete them also. The front view camera, because I bought a pretty good one, it, it works pretty good. The rear view camera, on the other hand, is horrible. I'll show you guys that in a minute. So when you click DVD, yeah, it says no disc. So that's the DVD. The video, I'm not sure what the video is about. Uh, file manager, that's where you manage your files. Gallery is here, just like a phone, pretty much. I did download Gmail. I don't even know why. Not like I'm going to ever check my email on the on the unit here. My phone is pretty much all for that. So that's pretty much it. You get a Play Store. I downloaded, you know, YouTube. Um, I downloaded the Zen UI, which looks like this. Let's switch back to the Zen UI, which is a different operating system that came stock with this unit. The reason why I like this one better is because it's cleaner, it looks nice, and it makes your unit faster. Everything loads up much faster when it's within Zen UI. So I'm going to set that one to default at the moment. So this is what it looks like. You can move these icons anywhere you want. This is how I've set them so I kind of remember where they are and it's very easy for me to um, to click on things. Also the icons come a little bit different on the Zen UI. Um, you could download different icon packs and stuff and just change your icons even more but yeah there's one more app that i haven't showed you yet um it's the easy connect app or whatever easy connection full so this thing supposedly it's kind of like an apple tv so let's see if we can get my phone to do this so here i'm on my phone if you guys can see if you click airplay <clears throat> this unit should show up it does so you click on it and let's hope this time it works because it works one day the next day it doesn't work I don't know this thing is tricky oh here you go it worked this time so here you go now you see my phone <clears throat> on the unit now this if I if I flip my phone this way let's say I'm within uh, let's say Safari or whatever if I flip my phone this way it goes to full screen cool 
we're happy about that right but let's go to YouTube app <clears throat> and I don't know I like to watch uh, TJ Hunt so let's go to this one we go sideways we'll be able to see the full-on full-on image but this is what you get nothing so on my phone you see if you see this here it still says this going well let's see if I can click it here and maybe it'll play on there but I don't think it will so it's playing on my phone but it won't go there let's see if we can uh, throw it again the sound is through it's not even through the unit either unless I click that other app so that doesn't work I don't get it so I'm trying to mirror it let's mirror it on YouTube <coughs> no it doesn't work so it won't mirror on YouTube app it won't mirror so I haven't really tried I'm gonna try this for the first time now I'm gonna go into the internet browser on my phone and I'm gonna type YouTube on there alright so we good this is one of my challenge videos or whatever just gonna click it see if it'll play that way oh wait a minute well that works let's see if we can make a big and uh, it's gonna work alright so looks like it's about to work maybe alright so it doesn't work again within integrated apps I don't know why but it looks like it works with uh, like it works on on the Safari browser so I'm pretty happy about the fact that it does that at least I haven't really known that it, that it actually did that when you're within apps though <coughs> it doesn't work so it's kind of like an Apple TV but not it's a little bit tricky you have to use only like the the main apps that came from either Apple or something like that which is whatever I guess so yeah so that's pretty much it with that I'm gonna exit that app as well so everything else pretty much works so I don't know you be the judge if this is worth it for you um, also one more thing to note I didn't get any instructions of installing this I had zero instructions for the unit, I had no manual, no instructions for installation, no instructions for the rear view camera, no instructions for the front view camera, nothing at all. So I don't know why they didn't send me any instructions, I had to figure everything out myself which was a pain in the butt because the rear view camera is kind of tricky to install guys. The only option you have and where to put the rear view camera is on the back rear window right under your spoiler on the Mazda Speed 3s. Um, that's the only place because if you put it down by the license plate, the license plate is way too low and it just doesn't, you can't see nothing. So I put it in the inside of the car, on the panel, looking out the window. Um, I do have a pretty tinted car. Um, it's, I guess it's supposed to be a little bit darker than, than usual, but at nighttime, you see zero clearance, like nothing. And I'm going to show you guys real quick how it looks right now. My car's on right now. We're well, not on, but the ignition's on, so I'm going to go to reverse and this is what it looks like on camera it looks better on on real life it looks horrible it's kind of blurry um, in the daytime I'm happy with it though for for free camera I'm happy with it in nighttime though even if there's light outside it's pretty dark you don't see nothing at all straight up black nothing these lines you can take away from the settings or not they don't really help much I mean I guess it could kind of point you where you're going but they don't beep or anything like that because obviously I have no sensors in the back of the car. So that's what the Eonon 6151 unit is. Let me know if anybody knows how to change this on the 2007 Mazda Speed 3, the time I'm talking about on top. Because I don't know, I just I want it, I want it to be the same. And I don't feel like going out at 12 o'clock. So that's pretty much it on the Eonon 6151F. Alright guys, so there you have your video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, you be the judge if it's worth the $300 to pay for it. Um, I don't know, if I were 
to do it again I'll probably not buy that stock unit I'll probably buy a different brand like a Pioneer that they have now and some Kenwood one that they have also like CarPlay maybe that's gonna be a better option for you because stuff might be working much better than this one on the other hand it is kinda of like an Android phone it does have a lot of features on there so but the speed is where it's lacking it's lacking a lot of speed you get no instructions you have to figure out where things go and it's just horrible to install uh, it doesn't fit on the bottom it clicks and it unclicks itself um, what else is there the reverse trigger wire for the reverse camera is extremely hard to find it's on the little kick panel on the right side on the on the passenger side um, and you're supposed to know exactly which color it is. Now all these colors on the wires there are extremely like extremely looking like the same exact color so you would have to really 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 look closely um, what I did was I used a multimeter and uh, I put the car in reverse and as soon as it beeped and that's how I found out which wire it was I also had a diagram of all the wiring where which one goes where but it was really hard for me to figure out since I'm not an electrician so yeah other than that I got it all installed it works pretty good once it's running running but once it initially starts up it's horrible so hope you guys enjoyed that video give it a thumbs up um, please subscribe for more videos and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one